Good morning, everyone. How are you? It is morning. It is live. I know there's nobody listening live because I really don't tell you that I'm going to be recording live, right? And for that, I am truly sorry. I will, though. Today is October 7th. Tomorrow at October 8th. I know a lot of you work during the day. I work at night. So... I will do a live show at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Just in case you wanted, just to give you a heads up, if you wanted to get on Spreaker, if you're on Spreaker, you could chat with me uh, by texting. There's a feature. To, and you know what? I can invite friends right now, it looks like, while I'm... I wonder if it's going to interrupt the show. But... Um, You're welcome to chat. You are... Wait. To chat. See if that happened. On this live episode. Through the Spreaker app. Now, yeah, that's if, yeah, most of you listen on Apple, so it doesn't really matter. But I mean, yeah, so I'll I'll just put that in there, see if anybody bites. But I have been remiss. It's Thursday. It's my first episode. I'd like to, uh, I got a text from Todd from Gettysburg, not a text, an email asking how am I doing, and uh, I'm doing fine. This week, earlier this week, uh, I had gone into Miami with the wife and daughter. She had a doctor's appointment. Then we got her uh, birthday present. Her birthday was yesterday, but we went and got her. It was we were looking for a TV, a smart TV for a room because we had taken it out originally. She didn't want a TV in a room. Now she wants a TV in a room. She's fifteen. She wants so no problem to go looking. You know, it's interesting, so many different TVs nowadays. There, I don't, well, I never really shopped when I was younger. And I don't remember ever buying a TV when I was younger. I would always get, a, I always, there was always someone that had a TV. Right? If you have a lot of friends, there were always someone who's getting rid of a TV. Did I buy, I bought one back in 2000. Two, and then when flat screens came out, that's, I mean, I think I, I didn't buy another one until, gosh, when was the last time? It's, I think this one, two years ago, the one I have. I mean, you bought three, three new TVs, brand new TVs. The rest I've gotten from other people who were getting new TVs. Yeah, that's what TV, you know, it's weird. So we were there Monday. We went out. Did we eat? And then we ordered some food from a local restaurant. And then I woke up Tuesday, one of my two days off. And you probably had this. I seem to get my sickest on my days off. So I was just feeling grubby, grubby tired, sick, icky, whatever, most of the day until I didn't even eat for a couple hours. And I don't know if it was the food or if I had a touch of a flu, but eventually passed. And it's really hard to motivate yourself to do a podcast when you're not feeling well. So, but I was, obviously I was all tip-top shape when it was, you know, work on Wednesday, which is good. I think it's my duty to show up for work well, healthy, ready to go. That's what I like to do. So we had, I I didn't get a chance to talk about things that happened on the weekend. We are going through our slow season. The restaurants are beginning to open up again. When I say open up again, most of so many restaurants shut down at the same time. We have some other restaurants that are shutting down for a month, the month of October. We're not one of them. We're going to be closed for, I think we're going to be closed for like four or five days. 
in a week or so, a week and a half. So it's today's the seventh, around from the eighteenth to the twentieth, and I'm going to we're the the wife, the daughter, and I we're going up to Washington D.C. to the Polish embassy for some passport work for my wife, uh, and then you know she has to reinstate her passport so she can have that. And uh, we're trying to get citizenship for our daughter for Poland. We're not moving to Poland or anything right now. Not that it won't be a possibility in the future. Who knows? I I don't know if Abby would be keen on that because she's more of an American now than anything, I think. And um, to move on from that, yeah, so we did all that stuff. I went into work yesterday. It was a double. It was reasonably... Oh, the bar seems to be almost always traffic through the bar. And we had a regular cast of regulars. I expected me to say characters. I didn't say that. But we did have a new one. These two girls came in, and we couldn't tell if they were Latin, Italian. It turned out there were two young Israeli girls in their early 20s. And they were trying to get a hold of some mussels, the the shellfish mussels. Because the girl, one of the girls asked me and said, we're looking for, it's, and I forget how she described it. She says, it's in a shell, it has yellow meat. And she goes on and then it's black. And I said, that's mussels, you know, because the, the, meat has a tendency to be yellow inside it, I think. So I started explaining to her, I said, they're bivalves and stuff like that. And we don't get a lot down here. You can get them down here, but I don't know of any place necessarily that does have them. They probably do, but I just don't know off the top of my head. And I said, mainly what you'll find down here are oysters, not so much as clams, but you get those every so often too, and scallops, which is a shellfish too, right? So we're we're talking. They're lovely young girls, very attractive girls, and they're sitting there. We're talkative. We're they're they're from Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, so they are on vacation in Florida. They came, which. I think for weather-wise, I think they're in similar places. I mean, it gets a little cool in the winter in Israel and the Mediterranean. It's it's not like you would on like the southern part of Gaza or anything like that. But uh, not Gaza, on uh, God, what's that piece of land? But it's the Red Sea, that area. So they're sitting there. Obviously, there's almost all guys at the bar. There's a couple women sitting with their men. And one of our regular walks, regulars walk, walk in, and he speaks. It's funny. He, he knows a little. He lived in Israel for six months, he, he said at one time. He knew some phrases in, in Hebrew. So he starts conversing with them, with them and says, oh, and I know one dirty word. And they, the girl doesn't say anything. Do you want to hear it? And I'm thinking, if she didn't say she wanted to hear it, I don't think she wanted to hear it. So I explained to him. And then I, I walk away. He's a nice guy. I know he's not going to do it. He's in his late 60s. He's at least 10 years older than me, maybe a little more. And then I walk in the back real quick, and I come back, and he's speaking French to him. And I said to uh, Bob, I said, Bob, did the girls tell you they speak French? Because they speak English pretty, pretty well. And you know they speak Hebrew. He goes, no, they said they know some French. And did they, I said, did they speak back to you in French? They go, no. I said, well, I know they know English. So why would you start speaking French to them other than to show them in French? He goes, oh, if I was only 20 years younger. And I go, 20? Holy shit. I said, forget 20 years. You're talking 40 years. Get some perspective on that. Perspective. 
And later on, we're going to be talking about embarrassment and all that stuff and whether, you know, whether we should be embarrassed or ever feel embarrassed or is there such a thing as embarrassment? It's like an inside job thing. But you, when he said 20 years younger, I, I've thought that before when I was not with Abby, if I was 30 years younger, something like that, 30, I mean, 40 years younger, well, I would be 18. And it really brought home that, God, fuck, I gotten old. And I have uh, an event that's occurring, like an event, a thing that's occurring this week, uh, weekend, today. I have friends coming back from coming down to visit or vacation from Philadelphia. And they're staying in Key Largo. And I think they... They're coming down here just to be in the Keys, but part of it is because they know me and they can hang out and things like that. They're from the bar in uh, McGean's Bar, which I haven't mentioned in a long time. I'd like to say hi to Heather, Pat, John, uh, everyone at McGean's. Uh, but this, the McGean's crowd is going to be down here. Um, Kevin O'Dare, Pat, McGean, John, I think, Dan Healy. I'll remember. I'll mention the other guys' names uh, when I get to talk to them. It's just they got a big group coming in. But there's nothing like seeing people you haven't seen in a couple of years. You know, when you're with your family, you're around people you are every day. You kind of don't realize time doesn't have the same effect because you see people gradually change over weeks and weeks and weeks if you're friends with someone especially since COVID I've seen people come back into the bar I haven't seen in a long time they've either put on a lot of weight or lost a lot of weight gotten in shape or been at, or out of shape all these different things and now it's when you run into someone some people that you knew really well and a group of them, you can, if you're a least part of attributive, let's say you can, you can make connections. You see people you haven't seen for a while. You remember them as younger and you see them now they're older. And then you go, wow, you think I did too. And it really comes home. And it's just a, it's a fact of life. It just happens. Some people age quicker. Some age slower. But everyone ages. That's a fact. For a couple years back, I thought that, oh, they're going to find something that's going to extend life to, you know, 200, 250. They'll just turn off that aging switch in humans. Well, they didn't find that out. What they did find out that the maximum age people can live to at the moment is 130. 130. And that's not like they say once you reach, they call it super uh, geriatric or something like that, or maybe super. If you're 105, it's like every year it's 50-50 for you. It's like flipping a coin. Whether something's going to take you out. Which I used to rely on all this time. to saying, oh, well, I got, I'm 58. So if I can live another 30 years, they'll make some progress and stuff like that. If, or 20 years, they'll make some progress. And maybe I can feel like I'm 40 when I'm 80. Well, no. That is not one of the things. It's like time travel. Like after a while, I said, well, you can't go back in time. You might be able to go forward in time. Or you might be able to slow down time for you and it speeds up around you. So it's almost like going into the future. So, yeah, the more they find out, it's just like all that, those Star Trek science things you heard about beaming. Yeah, they figure they can do teleportation. They're starting to figure out teleportation, sending information, because people are generally information. We're just a bunch of information. They send it from one place to the next. So I didn't say they figured out teleportation for humans. They figured out 
teleportation for particles and other things. You know, a fax machine is not necessarily teleportation, but it's the same principle if you're talking about sending information. But we're talking about sending the real the thing and reconstructing. It's like having you break something down, you figure out what it is, and then you reassemble it someplace else, tearing it apart. I don't know how we got on teleportation, but it has pertains to aging. So running into old friends and things like that, you look at them and say, and that if they, it's, it's, if they really take care of themselves, then you say, well, I guess I'm still young too because they're pretty vibrant. But if they're not, then you start going, ooh, I'm probably like that too. Well, should you care? Because, you know, every day is a gift, right? Should you care whether you're not at your peak? Who cares? And who's to say what is your peak? You got your peak physical, you got your peak sexual, you got your peak uh, memory states, your peak intelligence, your peak wisdom, your peak happiness, your peak uh, career satisfaction, relationship satisfaction, peak understanding, all these things that can happen, or peak acceptance. Not everything's a downside. That's all I'm saying is, and then when I'm I'm talking about this, I'm going like this. Ah, so yeah, everyone ages, everyone dies, and stuff like that. And it's just one of those things. I know, kind of morose, isn't it? Did I mention I'm doing a live show tomorrow, October eighth? Not from someplace. Li- I mean, it will be from someplace, but it's going to be live. So. If you're listening to it, I'm going to post it on Facebook that we're going to be going live and that you'll be able to chat if you, if you like on the speaker app. Moving right along. While I was, what was that, Monday or Sunday? or No, I was working a double Sunday, but I saw a movie and it was called Twilight's Last Gleaming. And I always, since I was a Teenager, I wanted to see that. I was 14 years old when it came out. It was 1977. And I didn't know what it was about. I never got around to seeing the movie. 77. What was going on in 77? 14. So if it came out in the summertime, I was spending my summers on my aunt and uncle's campground in North Carolina. Salisbury, North, outside of Salisbury, North Carolina. And these movies came out back then. You didn't. You had to wait. Kind of. I mean, you know there were curses in the movie too in 1978 the, there was several aspects of the movies there's a premise of the movie okay it takes place um at a nuclear launch site in i think it's north dakota and it's the icb ICA, uh, it's uh, norad um, you know air force norad command where they have an ICBM station where they control nine ICBM. And it's funny, they didn't really... I think in 77 they had MIRVed missiles because they were talking about having control of nine missiles. Well, our missiles, there were multiple re-entry vehicles in, on some of these big Titan missiles that they use uh, in, in 77. So when they would launch them into their ballistic path they would come down well they could come down and split well they do split into multiple warheads then i think they were up to four so but they never even mentioned the merv missiles like so they can hit four separate tar- each missile can hit four separate targets because you'd have that big missile and you have smaller warheads and you get to the top site and upon re-entry they'd split up and they'd go to they're different targets. Kind of depressing, I know. Well, a renegade general. Now, the cast, I got to talk about the cast. It's like, it's 1977, or so, when they made it in 76, people said, well, we got all these great old actors still alive. Why don't we use them in a movie? Well, they did. They did. They took, it was funny. It's like, originally I thought, oh, they grabbed all these old white actors. Nope, not just them. A couple older black actors. Okay? And younger black actors. So, so the guys are in there. There was, uh, it was 
the top billing is Burt Lancaster, Richard M- Widmark, Charles Durning, um, and then you had uh, Richard Jekyll, who was one of the guys. And uh, Burt Bert Lancaster was the renegade general. And he brought these two guys. And who was it? Oh, it was the guy from who the guy that played Rocky's brother in law. I keep on forgetting his name. And Paul Winfield. Whitfield. He was in uh, Terminator. He was the, the, the cop that was the uh, head of the. Uh, Christ. It, I think, no, was that. Maybe not. But I knew Paul Whitfield was also in Platoon. If it's not this. It may not be Sam. I'm confusing the two actors. The guy that played Blackula, William Marshall, who was a Shakespearean actor. That kind of sucks that. The only thing people say, oh, the guy that played Blackula. And not that that was a horrible movie. It was kind of one of those exploitation movies, right? Where they can just say, well, we got a regular Dracula. Why don't we just put it black? We make a black one, Blackula. And they had Roscoe Jenkins. Roscoe Jenkins was in The Cowboys, the movie The Cowboys with John uh, Wayne. Um, Charles Durning, I mentioned, and J. Cole and stuff. And a little known bit part was Cliff Clavin. And when you've seen, they're planning a device in order to blow up. They're trying to blow up the uh, missile silo, the government, in order to stop these guys from trying to launch on Russia. Uh, Cliff Clavin is one of the guys. John Ratzenberger. Yeah, with, still with that thick mustache he always has. But I'm watching it. It's kind of silly premise and stuff like that. But it you know, possibly could happen with Rangate General and two guys from uh, prison. I don't know if it was a military prison or a, a regular prison. I guess they may have given you more detail on that stuff. But So they seize the, uh, they seize the missile silo. They get the codes and stuff like that. And the funny thing about it, when they go in there, they got the one thing, one of the safety devices that would cause things to blow up is a level. And you'd have to remove this bubble, uh, this thing that had a, a poison in it, and it would flood the room with sarin gas if someone tried to disable this device. And this was in, in missile control science, so you had to keep this little air bubble in the center when you're removing it. So they did that, and then the guys that were working for the the Air Force commandos who were John Ratzenberger's in it, uh, they were placing this device, it's called a suitcase bomb or something like that, a small nuclear bomb that they were going to put outside the, the missile silos to blow it up. That had a very delicate switch with an air bubble in the center. And I thought, why would you have a nuclear bomb that you wouldn't be able to put in place, you know, you can move around a lot to have something that has a bubble in it so you don't shake it around too much. I mean, they, these guys had to hold it steadier than the guys had to hold nitroglycerin. I mean, that a nuclear bomb, and then they had to, you know, and they, I think they may have left it there because they called it off. You're not going to watch this movie. But they really made... And during this movie, the one thing that really struck me is they really depended on the level, the air bubbles in this, on two separate devices. Like one guy says, well, it worked on that one. Why don't we do the next one? I mean, it just seems a weird thing to have for, you know, I can understand an anti-theft device. But then again, what if there's an earthquake and a the air bubble in the missile silo shakes and it goes off and the sarin gas comes in and kills everyone in there. You know, what, what, yeah, I mean, obviously it's a missile silo and it's underground and got those blast doors and stuff like that. If they struck first, if the, uh, uh, our enemies struck first with nuclear weapons, who's to say that 
it wouldn't shake the ground enough that the air bubble would break the sarin gas. This, for some reason, releases this acid that eats through this wax. I mean, it's convoluted. Why do people make up this convoluted thing? They could just say, hey, this thing like in um, Mission Impossible, if these contacts meet, it would just blow up. I mean, placing a bomb, if you have a bomb, you're supposed to place them. The bomb isn't supposed to be dangerous until it's activated. Making it dangerous before it's activated is kind of stupid. Say, hey, listen. We're going to place this bomb. It's a powerful bomb. And before you set it, be careful. Otherwise, it'll blow up. Well, wait. Before I set it, why would it set off before I set it? And you go, well, we got this little level in there. If you don't do it right, it's going to blow you up. It's going to go off. You know, why don't you just put a little stick under it and you walk away a little while and then pull the stick out and then the whole bomb blows up. Why even have a switch for it? Just stupid shit. You know? Embarrassment. We're going to move on to that. Right? Life is full of embarrassment. Some people are more terrified than others. Some people just do things and they don't really care about it. They're unhindered by societal judgment on their behavior. I can think back constantly on not doing things or being concerned about things because I thought... What would people say? How embarrassing. Whenever I had a job that maybe I didn't think, you know, certain jobs. And when you're younger, you think this job's beneath me. I mean, I went to college. I shouldn't be doing this job. What are people going to think? What if I see someone I knew from school? What about my relatives? What's this? What's that? You know, it's funny. As you get older, that tinge of embarrassment or the cuts of people saying things, that doesn't seem to matter as much. It'd be nice to get rid of that embarrassment. There's things we should be embarrassed for when we behave badly, right? We lose our shit. Let's say get, get angry at our loved ones, blow our top when you're waiting in line, saying something insensitive. But there's things you can't control. Like if you have a wardrobe malfunction, a boob pops out, or your zipper's down, or something. I walk around for some reason, since I lost weight, my pants, you know, my shorts, my shorts, the shorts I wear at work, not my undershorts, my shorts. When I zip up, Sometimes it bunches in the front. I guess the zipper doesn't go all the way up, but it just pulls apart. Normally, when you're when the pants are fitted more, you know everything's taut. You don't have to worry about the zipper. And people come and tell me all the time, "Oh, your zipper's down." I'm like, "My eyes are up here. What are you looking at?" I'm wearing boxers. I mean, boxer briefs, so everything's covered. It's not like I'm going full commando. I'm not trying to expose myself. It's just the way it is. And it goes, zippers up. Um, it's like having an unbuttoned shirt. I'm not embarrassed by that anymore. I'm really not embarrassed. I, yeah, I know older guys and stuff like that, older than me, at the gym, they wear shorts and stuff like that. And they don't wear underwear and stuff. And they could be see them sitting on a machine. And if you're not careful, if you're looking, you'll see nutsack hanging there. Some more than others, depending on what kind of regimen they use. You know, because as things start stretching and hanging low and stuff like that. But isn't it, it is kind of like for some people, it's, it's kind of a social phobia. Being embarrassed. Embarrassed about the way you speak. It's embarrassed about the way you pronounce things. Embarrassed about your finances. Embarrassed about your clothing, the vehicle you have, the job you have. Embarrassed about, oh my God, I forgot to put makeup on today. Oh, my hair's a mess. 
or there was something hanging out of my nose the whole time, or I had this green thing stuck on my tooth while I was talking to him. And there's other people completely oblivious to it. They don't really care. I mean, there's a, it's, it's a broad line. I was going to say a fine line. It's not a, a fine line. You just do your best, you know, maintain. And uh, when you're, you're like, you, you know, with your grooming and stuff like that, and every so often you may have a flub, you may have a little boogie sticking out your nose. Or some food on your tie. It just happens. You go, oh, I made a mistake. There it is. I mean, some people could make a big, some people may make a big deal out of it. But really, most people are not paying attention. Don't mistake that somebody noticing, everyone noticing. There are big things. There are big things. And shame and embarrassment do play a role there where it keeps us from doing it over and over again. And there's some people that are just rude, and, you know, sometimes they they don't have that thing for embarrassment, and it doesn't work all the time, because they don't have good judgment, good sense, or politeness. I mean, sometimes, you know, be embarrassing. Oh, I've made a mistake. i got to watch that. You know, you got to be... Uh, you know, be, you, before you congratulate that woman that looks like she's pregnant, maybe, you know, look for a sign and say, oh, you know, hey, how's everything going? Blah, 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 blah. And wait for them to mention that they got, well, you know, hey, are you having anything to drink? No, I'm pregnant. Okay, there you go. Congratulations. Instead of going to them and say, hey, are you pregnant? <sighs> I mean, it happens a lot. I've seen. I mean, I've seen people where you think, "Are they pregnant?" Or they just put on a little weight, or they bloat it in a specific way. Well, that's all I have for you today. Another reminder that I will be doing a uh, broadcasting live tomorrow at ten thirty. So if you have the Speaker Act app, you, you can go on it and chat. You know, ask questions, mention something. Sometimes people accidentally get on and uh, listen to the show, but they're not listeners. They're first time listeners, and they, they go, they ask, What is this? Are you going to give any bartending tips? Oh, you, you know, it says Keys Bartender. I said, Well, it's from the perspective of a bartender. It's not as a bartender. I'm not criticizing all the people there. I just say, Talk about different things, topics, things that come up. I could talk about the old-fashioned, right? The drink, the cocktail, the old-fashioned. Some guy yesterday um, at work ordered an old-fashioned. I said, oh, well, what kind would you like? A Canadian whiskey or bourbon? You know, whatever you want. I'll make it. No, I'll make it a bourbon. And I, I made it for him. He asked me what it, you know, what. What went into it, how I did it. And he goes, well, I was thinking about using agave. And I said, you probably can. I would use, I, and I explained to him the amount. I said, I use a little less. And then if you need some, it's easier to add. You know, go with less than more because more just, I don't think people, I think they oversweeten things nowadays sometimes. Or people don't like it as oversweetened as it used to be traditionally. I don't know how I got there. There's my one bartending tip. If you're making something go less sweet, you can always add a little more. You'll have a little simple syrup around or agave nectar. Okay, I'd like to thank you for listening. I'm going to give you a call to action right now. Do me a favor, listeners. If you're regular listeners, oh, I'd like to thank Taiwan. Holy crap, Taiwan. What is it with the show? Are you, you know, what's going on? Listen to the Keys bartender over in Taiwan. The wait, it's I'm trying to get to Taipei, Taiwan, or whatever you want to call yourselves. I know what a precarious precarious position that you are in. Goes from a giant neighbor. It's like having a you're living right next to a let's say it would be akin to li- for me living next to. A, uh, a warlock's clubhouse. And the warlocks say, 
well, we want your property. You, uh, you know, you know, and then you have the bikers coming across on their bikes and stuff like making incursions like the Chinese make with their fighter planes and stuff like that. And then say, well, eventually we want to acquire your property. So don't don't put up a fence to separate us because we're really the same property. A clubhouse and your house. I don't care about the improvements that you made on your house. That's ours. So, Taiwan, I appreciate what you're going through. I don't fully understand because I, that's a huge threat right there. I mean, that's got to suck you thinking about that all the time. Oh, when, when are they going to do it? When are they going to decide to do it? I hope we have enough resources to be able to resist the, all the bikers coming over. What if they come over at the same time? Well, we got these neighbors and friends, but this guy's kind of far off. So, you know, that's like the U.S. and, and Britain and all that stuff. But uh, hang in there. And keep on listening to the show. So the call to, the call to action is pass the show on to someone you think that might like it. It's not for everyone. Don't be surprised when if they don't like it. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed about something you like. There wouldn't be a hundred different varieties of ice cream. You know, pick, there's a pickle flavored ice cream out there, a bacon flavored ice cream. Not everyone's going to like it. I'm the bacon. F- I'm the bacon flavored ice cream a podcast, and that's why uh, the numbers are what the way uh, way they are. Eventually, who knows? If I do get exposed enough, there's like I said, there's a certain amount of pe- certain type of person that likes the show, and uh, it'll eventually, you know, it'll reach those. Maybe not all at the same time, but there's a bunch of them. I do appreciate you listening, and I will be back tomorrow at 10.30. So if you see this in the future, when I say tomorrow, I'm saying October 8th, 2021, 10.30 Eastern Time. Okay? I'll talk to you later. And if, yeah, if you're in Taiwan or something like that, it'll be something different. It'll probably be like 10 o'clock at, you know, 9.30 at night or... Around probably probably eight thirty nine thirty at night, if I'm correct about no maybe it could be ten thirty. Well, I'll talk to you later. Have a great day. Here's the music. <laughs>